Today, I want to give you a few tips on how to make your documentary films more cinematic. Let's go. So this video is really for those of you who are in the early years of your filmmaking career and you want to step up the game and you want to start making films and documentary films that look better and you could say are more cinematic. And I know there's thousands of videos on YouTube how to make your videos look more cinematic, but I want to take a little different approach to this and really share what works for me. So it's my experience from shooting films. And the first thing that you need to do you need to start shooting 120 frames per second. Okay, no, I'm joking, guys. Uh, definitely don't listen to that. One thing I'm going to say before I jump to the tips is being intentional is everything. So remember that you always want to be intentional with your choices. And the first thing you can do to make your images look more filmic, I don't want to use the term cinematic all the time, is to shoot in 24 or 25 frames per second and making sure that your shutter angle is on 180 degrees. If you're using shutter speed, then your shutter speed is double of your frame rate. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 1 48th of a second or 1 50th of a second. The reason why you want to do this is because traditionally in cinema, this is the setting that have been used in history and this setting will result in the most natural motion blur. And motion blur is basically the blur that you see when you move things and objects and people in front of the camera. Now, if you will break this setting and if you will increase your shutter speed or your shutter angle, the motion blur will either be bigger or smaller and your footage might look jittery. You might see this, for example, in action movies when you want to make the action feel a little more hectic, a little more anxious, you would then increase the shutter speed and the images would be a little sharper and there would be less motion blur. So again, you can break this rule, but you have to be intentional when you're doing it. And the same applies for when you would be shooting higher frame rates. If you would be shooting 50 frames per second, then your shutter speed would be again 100th of the second, so double of the frame rate, so that you keep that natural motion blur even when shooting slow motion. The next Thing I would recommend you to do in order to create more filmic looking documentaries is to create some rules. And what I mean by this is before you even start shooting, create sort of a cheat sheet or a guidebook which tells you what lenses you're gonna use, what focal lens you're gonna be shooting on, what camera movement are you gonna use, is it gonna be shot handheld, is it gonna be using an easy rig, is it gonna be mostly using gimbal, um, are you gonna shoot on sticks? You can also decide how you're gonna shoot certain scenes, how you're gonna shoot establishing shots and so on and so forth. So in my experience, the more rail guards you can give to the shooting style of your documentary, the more coherent and the more unified the look of the film will be, which will result in a more cinematic experience for the viewer. I did exactly this for my film Los Sueños about the bicycle messenger in Buenos Aires and I shot the whole film on two lenses, Canon FD 24mm and Canon FD 50mm and I shot everything handheld. By putting these boundaries or rules on the shooting I was able to create a coherent look for the film which resulted in a more filmic experience I would say. So just to repeat this, create a sort of a guidebook of rules on how you're gonna shoot your next documentary. Now the tip number three is about scheduling. And you know how people tell you that you should uh, shoot in a blue hour and you should shoot in a golden hour as much as you can. And I definitely agree with that, but just thinking about that is not enough. You need to think about how can I actually make sure that I'll shoot within these good times and what will I do during the day when the light is not so perfect. And this is where scheduling can really help you because you can have a look at the shooting dates, you can have a look at the timeline that you're shooting the documentary and ideally you wanna schedule the most important scenes that you want to look good in the morning or afternoon hours, maybe even blue hours in the evening and then the scenes that are maybe a little more verite and that actually have to happen during the day can be shot during the day. 
but without a proper planning and proper scheduling, you will just end up with a mess and you will put your project at risk. So scheduling is important. Try to schedule your shoots in a way where you really use the most out of the morning hours, you know, early morning hours and then afternoon sunset hours. And also from the other hours during the day, think what can be shot within those bright hours. Maybe it's shooting inside, maybe it's shooting some verite scenes and so on and so forth. The next tip, and this is really important, would be to always protect your highlights. So whenever you're shooting outside or you're shooting inside, pointing your camera towards the window, always try to expose for the brightest part of your image. By doing this, you will protect your highlights and make sure that no parts of the image are overexposed. If, for example, you are exposing for the highlights, but you also need to see something that is inside the room. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I expose for the highlights here. And as you can see, my face is quite dark right now. So instead of me raising this up, even though I could still raise this because there's latitude in the highlights and I'm still not clipping, but let's say that I would be clipping here. So let's go back here. So in order to make this, make my face brighter, I would need to bring more light in the room, maybe shooting a light from that side of the window or using a reflector or a bounce just to bounce a little more light in my face. Or I could try to change the angle and I wouldn't be shooting towards the window, which is the brightest part, but maybe I would be shooting uh, towards a corner on the other side of the room. If I want to capture what's important inside a room. Or I would just go for the silhouette look. That can also be really good and silhouettes always look very nice and very cinematic. Okay, back to the back to here. <clears throat> now a few ways to make sure that your highlights are not clipping is using zebras set to 99%, using a waveform or using false color. If you would like to know more about these tools, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make a video on how to properly expose your footage. And last but not least would be to actually learn how to work with natural light. Because in documentary scenarios, most of the time you will be working with natural light and with practicals. So really practicing that, practicing how you can get the most out of natural light, either by diffusing, by bouncing, by using negative fill is such a valuable skill to have as a documentary cinematographer and filmmaker that I can't stress it more. So focus on learning how to work with natural light, observe it every day, experiment with it, and over time you will see that your cinematography will improve. For example, this shot is shot using natural light. I have a window right here. There's a soft curtain over the window, so the light is quite soft and it's also cloudy outside. And then I have a five in one reflector right here, which I'm using as a negative fill. So I'm using the black part to just bring a little more shadow to this side of my face. And guys, I could continue with more tips on how to make your documentary films look more cinematic, but uh, I wanted to keep this video short. So let me know if you would want to see a second version of this video where I could talk about other stuff. Now, as I said, I'm heading to Congo in a week or 10 days, and I'm gonna be there for three weeks shooting a four episode series about poaching. So stay tuned, subscribe, because a lot of interesting stuff is coming from Congo, so a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of breakdowns of my processes and, and overall just a very valuable and adventurous content. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you next Tuesday with a new video. Peace.